All right, we're live. Welcome, guys, to the uh, 121st installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast series. We're uh, on today with a gentleman who reached out to me last couple of weeks who's uh, been a guy that works in bachelorette parties. Uh, he's a male stripper. He's been doing it since 2009. He's got some interesting stories. Uh, he wants to sell, uh, tell, and he's um, pivoting out of the industry. Um, before we sort of get started with his stuff, just a quick announcement. I just had the um, ACX version, so the Audible version of the second edition of the book approved, so you can get it now and listen to it uh, while you're driving your car, or working out, or whatever you want. Tom, what's going on, man? Hey, Rich. Uh, Long-time listener, big fan. Um, I didn't mention it either, but I discovered your channel through my two-year social media detox I took, and that was a, a great find. You found it during a detox. That usually means you yeah. stay off social media. How'd you come across it? Uh, so I was just using YouTube as my source for information. Okay. And um, I came across Stoicism. And I found, you know, all the great philosophers like Marcus Aurelius. And then I came across your channel. Um, it was about uh, entrepreneurship um, mm. and other things. But I didn't dive too much into your channel. I dived into Stoicism before yours, but later dived deeper to yours. So cool. it was cool. So um, how did you get into uh, doing bachelorette parties and stripping? Uh, you know, you mentioned in your DMs that you, you know, you've been doing this since 2009, right? Yeah. And we're keeping them anon for obvious reasons, guys, you know, because it was pivot. But yeah, you know, kick off the start story there for us. Yeah. So um, just tell you guys ahead of time, all the names and locations have been changed for privacy reasons in respect of mine and everybody else's. Uh, so how I got started, uh, it's back, actually, it's funny, back in high school, um, they uh, invited me out to this party, house party, way before 2009. Um, I was intoxicated and, you know, I liked this chick at, that was there at the party and her two friends said, give her a lap dance. And I did. I was intoxicated. I was young, um, probably 17 at the time. And apparently, like, I blew them away. Like, they said, like, oh, you should be a male stripper just the way you dance I'm like i was just fucking around you know or messing around yeah um and well they planted that seed in my head and so when i uh found out about amateurs night at this uh and it was actually a full, a full nude male strip club i decided to go in and try it out and i got the part and ever since then and i've uh increased my experience and did it did it start in the male strip club and then it sort of branched off into doing bat like private parties, like bachelorette parties? Like how does that normally work? Yeah. So, you know, everybody's story is different when I, when they come into, uh, to be a male stripper. Right. I, uh, for the most part, and this is what a lot of male strippers don't tell you is that you, sometimes we start off working at like gay male strip clubs or, um, gay bars, like go-go dancing. Mm-hmm. Some guys do just start off straight and like doing bachelorette parties for just bachelorette. Um, but I started off a, a, it was a unisex, so it was like a gay and um, straight male strip club. And now then are, from there, go ahead. Guys in that line of work normally booked for gay work or is it mostly for bachelorette parties? Or is it like 50-50? It's a bit of a split. It's a 50-50 and it all depends on the city. Yeah. Um, you know, the community and it's like if you're located in a city where it's primarily like a gay district then you'll get booked more mm -hmm. for gay parties but if you if you're around the city you'll it's like a 50 50. Mm, okay um so talk about your first your first experience doing a private bachelorette party what was that like like do you even do you even recall the first one do you have a memory of it or is it honestly dude i i did a rough estimate and so i've been doing this for and I can get off track sometimes, so let me know if I yeah, do. No problem. We'll take you back. Um, yeah, dude, it's been a very long time. And I took a two to three year break since 2009. Um, I can't remember my first <laughs> bachelorette party, but I do remember there was a time where 
I was first getting introduced to the private bachelorette parties. And I was so, uh, <laughs> I was so scared of the first one that, and this was when I was 20 or 21, maybe. Um, I called one of the guys I used to work with and he uh, ended up taking it. Uh, but I guess the, the first one that I was one that I can think of that stands out the most is one that I got called out for. Um, it was up in the mountains. It was a call. This is a very rich area. And so I did the gig. They asked for a police officer, right? And I did my thing, um, arrived. Well, usually, so you text the per the bridesmaid and like, hey, I just arrived, um, blah, blah, blah. So her friend- Is there like a this, specific request for police officer, um, butler? Like what are the common ones that like costumes or, or do you do costume changes? Okay, so common ones are police officer, they got firefighter, you got cowboy, uh -huh. you have, uh, Last year, it was really common to order a delivery guy, basically a delivery uh, pizza guy. delivery. Okay. And if uh, you scroll through my Instagram, you'll see that um, I have a couple pizza delivery guys or okay. pizza delivery gigs that I did. It was a lot of fun. I act. I actually. I'm actually curious uh, went, what a pizza delivery costume looks like. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up right now. We're not gonna put this on the screen, obviously, but I just want to see it. Pizza delivery. Okay, but carry on with the story. Yeah, so funny thing is, uh, I like uh, doing like a method acting. So if I'm going to do a pizza delivery gig, <laughs> I might as well go all the way out, right? And so I went, this was 30 minutes. No, it was about 40 minutes before the gig. I stopped by Pizza Hut. <laughs> and I ordered my pizza, right? Right. And this was strictly for the gig. And I told them, hey, um, it was this girl that was working the front, I just flirted a little bit with her. I'm like, Hey, just so you know, I'm a male stripper. I'm just trying to do this party. Do you happen to have a piece of clothing, an extra uniform that you have laying around that I could have buy from you guys? Mm -hmm. It would really help. And they were just laughing their ass off and they gave it to me. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, so it was official. a pizza. They actually gave you a uniform. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then I ordered the pizza. And so, in the gig, I used the pizza as the prop, and okay. I was feeding it to the each of the girls at the bachelorette party. Got it. All right. So, what sort of crazy stuff you know have you seen? Because I had a guy on uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know if you saw the podcast interview, but he uh, he did what was considered, I think, dancing bear parties. I don't know if if that's still used today. Is that something that you're familiar with? Yeah, I'm. You, uh, I'm very familiar with a dancing bear. What is the dancing um, bear? If you, you know, if you can explain it to our viewers. So, um, back back in the day, um, the dancing bear, from my knowledge, and um, people can correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't dive too deep into the dancing bear, but basically, porn meets strippers, and the strippers are um, covered in their face for obvious reasons uh, with whatever silly mask it is, mm -hmm. and then there's just a line of girls just fucking each and every one of them mm -hmm. uh, i mean i've been in situations where at bachelorette parties um you know there's a two of us or maybe three of us that go in to do a private party and i'll name this specific time where we were all police officers we went in and uh you know we we role played and like you just had our flashlights out we had the siren music um handcuffs out all the girls were they were just loving it and um so towards the end of the gig they wanted to go in the private room to do lap dances and so all three of us all three entertainers went in to give private dances in a separate room to three different girls and I remember hearing one of the girls who got a lap dance um, was talking about her husband and that they've been married and they have kids. And so she got a private lap dance. No big deal. It was just a lap dance. Um, 
it just more intimate away from the other girls. Well, that and one thing led to another and it wasn't me. It was more, I am 33 years old now. And I'm in my early twenties, I was a lot more wilder than I am now. I'm more tamed. <laughs> um, so with the, what happened, basically the bride, um, got hot and heavy with uh, the other two dancers and ended up having sex with them. And well, I was doing the lap the dance with be. the other girls. Well, I'm sorry, not the bride, the girl who was married. Okay. So the woman that was married ended up sleeping with two of your colleagues. Yes. And uh, the bride was there, but she wasn't, she, I mean, she was basically halfway, oh, halfway, halfway into, is uh, what, like in her mouth or I mean, um, use a little bit of detail and yeah, was she was explicit. giving handies um, to okay, the guys, yeah. but she right. yeah she didn't have sex with them so, um, from the last podcast. And I I did listen to uh, was it uh, Mike? Yeah, the smell stripper. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I listened to his podcast. And so, so how ahead. common is that in your experience? Because I mean, like I always get challenged. Like, oh, that's not that common. You know, it's okay if women go to bachelorette parties. Like, how common was were. were indiscretions and women stepping out on a husband or maybe even you know like at a, a bachelorette party and it was the bride to be the next day or something like that like how often did that ha happen in your experience you know i will s second uh mike on this and from my experience it's it's all it comes down to the influence of the friends man <laughs> um they, you know, encourage the bride to make some bad decisions if she's not surrounded with, uh, you know, level-headed friends. But it's usually 80% of the time, man, um, they're somebody or just there, there's a lot of people that are just wanting to escape their life in a different state. And it's usually bachelorette parties from a different state that come to my home state mm -hmm. or I'll travel and they're from another state and they're just, they think it's okay because they're, they're far away from home to they mess around. And weekend, they went for a long drive. They hopped on a flight. They're gone for two, three days and they figured, you know, what happens in Nashville, what happens in Vegas, that stays in Vegas sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. They got their girlfriends egg in the mind. You said 80%, like it's 80% of the time that you'll see this happen. Yeah. 80% um, of know, the time. Wow. You know, uh, I got red pilled um later in my stripping career because i didn't really see i i noticed a lot of uh issues but i just didn't um the the frying pan didn't hit my head until later mm -hmm. um after a two-year relationship that i was in especially but uh yeah usually 80 percent, man and when i do the performances at an actual show um you see it constantly you see in each group of bachelorette parties and we'll get maybe like on a busy day um 20 plus groups or even 50 bachelorette party groups packed in that uh venue and uh yeah i mean there's the guys are usually going home with somebody or they go out with them mm -hmm. and um just entertaining the girls just they invite us too. They can go out with them out in, you know, downtown. And, you know, as somebody who notices all this constantly, it's, it's, it just numbs you as a, uh, as somebody who, as a man who sees all this, it's just what it is. And that's part of the red pill is, you know, you get numbed and, but you just realize, okay, this is, this is how life actually works. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because whenever I say something like that on social media, like if you let your girl go to a bachelorette party or a, a stag or stag at or whatever, you're, you're a freaking idiot because, you know, they're not sitting around getting their nails done. Um, a lot of the time, you know, bad things happen. It's like, um, you know, like, what do you think is going to happen if you put alcohol in a private room, usually overnight in a different town with a bunch of women who want to go crazy and then there's naked dudes walking around that are in good shape? <laughs> yeah like, exactly what do you, you think is going to happen like you think they're going to sit around playing like checkers or something like that um now is I, it is it is it brides too at the 80 percent level like you know like brides to be or is it just like they're married friends that are that uh 
you know, promiscuous because they've been married for a while? I th- I'd say it's both. Um, if they're surrounded by, you know, some slutty friends or friends are just making some bad decisions and the bride is the one that, uh, you know, she has somewhat of a level head. Um, I can see it, you know, at these gigs that she fights it. The bride fights it. I'm like, no, like I shouldn't because uh, he's my husband. And then they see that their girls are having a good time. She gives in, especially if she's drinking alcohol and then mm-hmm. she'll regret it. And, um, and so I do all kind of work um, from dancing. I do like cabana boy style slash butler, sexy butler gigs mm-hmm. where basically I wear the apron and nothing underneath. And so that's more of a uh, light version of a male stripper. You just have eye candy. You have a, a sexy butler guy making drinks and, um, right. you know, hosting, hosting fun party games. You know what? I do want to mention there's one story that um, yeah, it gave me more light, uh, I guess hope, mm-hmm. but it can also give your viewers hope. Um, and it was, it's so crazy because I've never had anything like this happen to me um, or I have, I've never seen such a thing. It was during the show um, at one of the venues and it was a full house. And I saw this uh, cute little black girl um, just uh, in her little table full of her girls having a great time. And she just had her hand um, on her uh, chin, like looking like she was bored. Like she just, you know, didn't have any interest. And I made fun of her as I was walking by, as the show was going, you know, one dancer after another. And I said, hey, uh, you know, you seem pretty bored. Just giving her shit. And she's like, yeah, this isn't my thing. And music's blasting, so I couldn't really hear that well. And she said, yeah, this isn't my I said something. And I asked her, oh, can you say that again? And she pulled her necklace out, and she said, I'm a woman of God. And uh, then she said some verse, and I was taken back. I'm like, wow, like you don't really get that that often. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get some girls that come in are religious, um, but they don't follow through all the way you'll see them crack into like the, the glories of what the, the show offers. But throughout the whole night, she just seemed uninterested. She didn't want to dance. She didn't want to, she even said that she was there for her, um, just sit there to support her a friend who's getting married. And, but yeah, she didn't partake in any of the activities at the, the show. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was really interesting. So, okay. So, um, you know, it's interesting because I've been to a lot of um, bachelor parties, um, you know, you know, especially in my 20s and 30s because, you know, that's when friends get married. And uh, I never saw or like the stories that I've got from male strippers is like 80% of the time, you know, these women are stepping out on their husbands or they're stepping out on the guy that they're about to be married. And whether it's a handy or it's mouth action or it's full blown, you know, home base, you know, sort of thing. Um, I've never seen it to that frequency when guys have bachelor parties. It, it just, it just maybe like once I think I saw it, you know, where there was, um, you know, there was some banging going on. Um, but aside from that, it just, it's, it's very, very, very inf- infrequent. Why do you think women are, you know, women behave, behave that way in situations like that when men don't? So my analysis and, you know, I'm not perfect, man. I uh, stepped out and got involved in somebody's marriage um, two times out of my whole career, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So I cheated my own relationship so that, you know, once and I felt how that was like and I got involved, you know, two times with somebody's marriage and, um, you know, it, just, it didn't feel good because of my values and whatnot. Was, was, uh, was she already married or was she the bride-to-be? Okay, so one of them was a bride to be, and the second one was uh, somebody who was already married. Okay. Yeah, and Made so box, I'm guessing you know they were married to a guy that was a provider, money. Yeah, you know what? Um, that's what it was because they uh, sometimes the brides or um, a lot of people in the group add me on Instagram, mm-hmm. and you know after I do a party, you know just look at their stories or the post and. I they see there. Add you on Instagram, so yeah. I mean, like, 
if they follow your account, then you can see the follow. So they're, so they're leaving a paper trail of their behavior, obviously. Right. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, it's no shame, man. Um, you know, they, you have a lot of these girls at the shows or even private parties who even before alcohol or after alcohol, um, they're hitting on the, the male stripper, or the, the sexy butler guy, or cabana guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they have a picture of them and their boyfriend or husband on their phone. And while they're here trying to make a move on the, you know, male stripper and the butler. So that's no shame. So we need to shame people. I mean, shaming is good. It, it holds people accountable. But, yeah, so that for a while. Yeah. Um, so that's important. But the reason I think, yeah, the reason why, I don't know, man. It's like surrounding these girls. Like, if there's a woman out there that wants to improve her life and surround herself with um, better quality friends, that's one of the keys to help influence or have a strong um, mindset like that, uh, that black girl at that show. Mm-hmm. who didn't partake in any of the activities and she remained uh true to her cause which you know um god was hi- her higher cause and she didn't want to commit any kind of adultery i guess interesting um do the women pay for f- we'll call it full service do they end up paying for, f- for full service or is it just like you know you just sort of get into it because things happen yeah um i mean it just depends on who you're asking what male entertainer you're asking mm-hmm. um or how hot I, she is <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would imagine right um you know i was i've always been careful ever since um you know stepping in this line of work uh, when i started at the full nude male strip club um you know there and i do want to mention or i'll mention this after but uh yeah when i stepped into that realm it was a, a darker uh, weird world because you know some some guys in that field um, when work, when they work in the gay field or when they work in the field with uh, you know surrounded with gay customers and also women is you know I guess everyone has a price mm-hmm. and um, for the full service I've had a, a female come in and she oh okay this brings me back wow. Um, since it's been so long, man, I've uh, there's it's been a blur of a memory, but I do remember there's one. She was like a Middle Eastern customer who went who saw me, and she was just mesmer- like totally mesmerized with me, right? And she invited me to come to her house and give her a lap dance there, and I did, and like about four different times. Um, just I drove out all like, probably like a good hour drive just to give her a lap dance. Mm-hmm. But she kept pushing to do more and more and more. And she was like a three dude, three or two. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was sweet personality and everything. But I sometimes I don't know how these guys um, give certain dances. And uh, they got like they get stimulated. But I can't. I, I have no way to get in like, a, I don't know if I can say it online or on live. But, you know, they get an erection. Um, but with that one, I just, I had to stop giving her a private lap dance because, you know, it just, she wanted more and more. And I just, honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, what do you charge for go that far? Lap dance? Uh, it just like depends. Driving out to the house just to do that one sort of session. It could be from 150 to 200. And that's for an hour or? Yeah. That's an penis. hour. That's, that's like super cheap. Yeah, so um, hmm. um, with that's one specific story, uh, man. Dude, I have so many stories; it's 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 hard to keep up. But yeah, what's what the craziest story that comes to mind? Oh, I have wrote them down too. Let's see. Um, oh, I do want to mention to you uh, before we go on because it's on my mind. Um, if you have a girlfriend, she hangs out with her gay friends. She goes to gay bars with the gay friends. Um, and <laughs> if the gay bar has go-go dancers, you can't even trust that. Because <laughs> uh, 
a lot of the times the uh, go-go dancers you know uh, we're straight like i go go-go dance too well i used to um but yeah they uh you know girlfriend bride they'll go in and they're not they're not safe there either if they're not surrounded with uh quality um, gay friends or friends that go to gay bars yeah i don't i wouldn't trust a chick hanging out with gay friends in gay nightclubs (laughs) um the craziest story to go go back to your question uh i got a couple one one specific one um yeah so i was doing a job out in this mountain um community it's like a bunch of rich houses over there and uh i was playing a cop i went in and this uh cute white girl greeted me at the door she was all over me and when i mean all over me like she just literally touched me right when she opened the door she told me hey the batch you know everyone else is getting ready um just wait here with me and she just um yeah, I couldn't stop touching me. So once her party was ready to go, I did my thing. I, uh, you know, my performance, I don't remember how long it lasted, but um, afterwards I started getting dressed. I was talking to the girls, asking me a lot of questions, you know, the whole nine yards, like how long have you been doing this? How do you like the job? Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, so they and this is my rule um i don't hook well at least now i i don't do it as much as i used to but even back then my rule was as long as the party um, gave the thumbs up like if most of the party gave the thumbs up to pursue um, their friend or if they push you to pursue their friend then i will take that opportunity um, to hook up with them because there's just it's I don't like mixing up um, pleasure with my money because then down the road that basically gets some, like I'll it will decrease my chances of uh, making more money down the road does that make sense yeah okay because um, so going on with the story yeah these girls like they told me hey you should uh, you know hang out with uh, We'll just call it Brittany, that white girl that greeted me at the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should uh, hang out with Brittany and blah, blah, blah. So just give me the the wink. I'm like, all right, sounds good. So we, we ended up hooking up upstairs. We went from the shower to the bedroom. And so, so every- just to be clear, there was no going out on a date or a coffee or a drink. It was no, just no, no, no. Going up the stairs. Yeah, going upstairs. Okay. Like, hook up with, yeah, sorry if I wasn't uh, clear. Uh, so. We hooked up and afterwards she started crying. Like after we had sex, she just immediately started crying. Mm-hmm. And I uh, immediately just went up to her Asian friend. I think, yeah, she was the host of the party. And I was like, hey, you're, f- we, we had great sex, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then she started crying. I don't know what's going on, Brittany. And then she's like, oh, she misses, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay. Then we're all good. I'm going to make my way out now. She's like, yeah. Mm-hmm you better do that so that was when i was younger and i honestly i was young and still aware of like the whole like i don't want to be fucking me too or i don't want to i don't want to be put on a charge for you know consented sex but you know you know how people lie mm-hmm. um so that's one that's one crazy story is just somebody do crying ever, right after sex do you ever get me too um or does anybody ever get me too in like the male stripping industry? Has that ever happened? You know, not that I've heard of, um, but there's some guys in the field still that just need to hang it up. Mm-hmm. They're a lot older or they just haven't taken care of themselves. And I can see them getting me too for sure because, um, you know, they, they'll they probably, girl probably would just regret hooking up with the, the, the sleazy out of shape stripper. Right, right, um, right. But, you know, with good good looking guys, I I haven't heard them uh, heard guys getting me too. Um, I mean, sleaze balls exist everywhere in every field, so I'm sure there's there was a point that maybe some guy tried to get charged for it. Do the um do the hookups happen in the strip joints or is it just on the bachelorette parties where it's like a private space? 
more on the private space man yeah okay yeah because at the shows that's where it leads to hey come hang out with us or mm -hmm. come back to our place so i mean like you'll do a gig you'll have what like a two-hour slot or something like that and then afterwards they're like hey you know we're going to this nightclub or we're going to this uh place you know why don't you come over yeah got it yeah. um how much money do male strippers make on an annual basis like good ones If you it's a good question. I was always curious because when I was in my 20s, I used to work at this uh, collection agency and there was this huge hippopotamus that sat behind me that had a, a big <laughs> drawer full of candy. And she would always make like lewd remarks like, Rich, you should come in, you know, work at the strip joint that I go to because, you know, you'll make a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to whip you with my licorice stick or something. I'm like, not a, not a chance in hell I would ever go to a place where people like you are at. <laughs> I was always curious though. <laughs> Um, you know, man, it, it all depends on what state city, um, you live at. And if you travel, the guys who travel, I didn't, I haven't had the chance to, um, do the tours. Mm -hmm. The guys who do the tours make a killing, um, tours like some, from like town to town to town, like sort of yeah. like the tour girls that do strip joints. Yes. So it's like tour guys got it. Okay. So it's like big names then. Yeah. Um, I, Honestly, Kill, can't give you a number. What, though, like half mil, mil year. Um, I, I'm gonna guess, and maybe there might be somebody in your, in your audience who might uh, correct me. Um, but if there's anybody out there that knows, and go go ahead and, um, you know, they'll tell you or whatever. But I'm gonna guess more than 40, 40 grand. Yeah, a lot more. Than forty grand, because if you're constantly getting show pay, and then you're getting tips on top of that every single day, show. yeah, yeah, that's insane. That's insane. That's actually pretty pretty strong cash. Um, all right. Um, I also wanted to ask you about red flags too, because I've got a chapter in my book with twenty one red flags. I don't know if you've read the book. I forgot to ask you when we were chatting back and forth on DM. Yeah, I've uh, read it on Audible a couple times. Um, I, you know, with with any book, it's always good to review it constantly to get to memorize uh certain chapters but yeah i yeah. have actually the book right here was there anything in the red flag chapter that popped out over and over again that um you know would be associated with less desirable um more promiscuous women like any sort of behaviors like anything on that list there uh daddy issues feminist unhappy unlucky competes with people or sorry competes with men uh, keeps men around from her past shit with money violent extreme jealousy party girls i mean party girls is probably one of them for sure uh tattoos and piercings is there any association between the volume and number of tattoos and piercings and promiscuity at bachelorette parties yeah um okay so put it this way man i've i've seen a consistency of Because, uh, and I'll and I'll wrap like a lot of different parties from stripper, like the stripper parties to the cabana to the butler, and the consistency I've seen is, you know, the whole boss babe attitude. You know, I don't need a man, or um, guys have they listen to me at a snap of a finger, so they think they're entitled to everything. Um, tat. I see, yeah, daddy issues for sure. Because when they start talking and they start talking about like trauma, or like I overhear it about like you know mm -hmm. their dad this or or their family this, or just having some some family problems, and um, it just sounds like they're just never resolving their family issues. And this is me like just in the background hearing this. So for sure, daddy issues. And I see that you have that for number one. So that that is definitely a an important thing because the fi the family dynamic is important. Having both parents, obviously, right? But if you know if you don't have the dad there, then uh, for these girls, it's a it's a big issue. That's what yeah. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Any other ones that pop up? Uh, Common like red flags that you see in these women that would step out that would misbehave. You know, I'm gonna say. So I'm a, I'm a, I love tattoos. Um, personally, me on on my woman, I've, I, didn't, I don't want 
too many tattoos, but if she already comes with it and she, her characteristics are, um, like if her values are up there over her tattoos, it's not going to be, be a big deal. Um, but I've seen with s tattoos being another one, um, and that's a combination of their tattoos and they just have a horrible character. Mm. So it's a, so it's a character thing. And I think a lot of the red flags sort of some of the negative red flags that might be correlated with the, the misbehaving, you know, let's call it are are you know, certainly there. Um, yeah. And party girls for sure. Um, yeah. Party girls are always a huge red flag because I've, I've been to Vegas. I've been to Bezo. I've, you know, I've been to these places. I've seen the party girls. I've seen a lot of these, you know, like uh, bachelorette parties in these places too, where they have the the sashes and it's like bride, you know, like bride to be and, you know, like the bridesmaids and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's always interesting, you know, because they'll advertise that they're that they're at a bachelorette party and they're getting married and they're there to party and there's no reservations whatsoever that I've seen anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I do want to mention. Um... Cause I'm, I'm interested, I'm personally interested in human behavior. I think that's why I've stayed at this job for as long as I have just studying just behavior from all groups of people. And with this job and all male entertainers can agree to this. Like we're at a degree, a therapist to many different people. Well, yeah, I guess I was gonna ask you, do they open up to you and tell you stories and stuff? Oh, dude, you have like, we're basically like, are their own little mini sexy therapist um <laughs> it's, it's like a fantasy for them i guess uh it's a so, fantasy to have a guy come and deliver a pizza dance <laughs> around and then and then listen to their bullshit yeah and you know what dude like because i'm interested in the human behavior and um i've had a, a colorful background myself um i always i'm always interested to hear other people's stories and the kind of once they understand that, you know, you're giving them the time and day to hear their stories mm -hmm. at these gigs, and especially the sometimes the party sees that you're being, you're, you know, you're giving them, giving one of the girls that your time and listening to them, and it raises your tip. You're like, oh, like, you know, Tom is listening to Becky's, um, fucking bullshit uh trauma story about her ex-boyfriend who hit her blah, blah blah like isn't he so sweet and then that just increases the tip you know uh, but like i came i come out of it in a genuine way like i'm interested like i uh, i want her to leave that party like, getting a fucking sexy pizza guy but also having having a guy you know, hear um her story and right. um whatnot but uh yeah dude like i've i've heard it all dude interesting um I'm going to I'm going to drop the link to call in and ask questions um in a minute cuz I always do a Q&A so I'm just going to call in for Q&A. Any other stories you want to share like anything of interest that um you know people might want to hear about some of these experiences cuz I mean like you're also talking about pivoting and sort of getting into uh um you know dealing with the therapy component but on a more professional level too. Yeah. Um uh, so put it this way dude uh for this okay so dude i'm like so overwhelmed i know there's a term where you have so many different options and you just can't decide on one um okay so there's this so i did this uh sexy cabana butler gig it was two of us and um i don't remember the bachelor party it was maybe like six seven of them so throughout the gig i was chopping up limes uh, for drinks and the bride went in the room with the other guy, um, the other cabana guy, mm -hmm. and I, I heard it. Um, and well, uh, I already assumed what was gonna happen from there. So they come out of the room, I see the bride fixing her dress up, and then she says, oh, don't forget your phone in my room. Um, this had, this is probably maybe a good 15 to 20 minutes of uh, them in the bedroom mm -hmm. and the bride comes to me in the kitchen uh, as I was uh, mix making drinks for everyone at the bachelorette party. And she goes up to me like, you know what? You look like my ex. And then she starts pulling out her phone 
um, she starts scrolling and she finds a picture of her ex and she's like, look, see, <laughs> I look at her ex and I'm like, oh, uh, uh, just fucking bullshitting with her and agreeing with her. And like, oh yeah, it looks like uh, I do, or I might, we may have some similar traits, whatever. And then she fucking FaceTimes him. And then the way she's talking about her ex and mine, this is the bride, right? Um, she FaceTimes her ex and then she starts talking to her ex and says, like, hey, so-and-so, um, we'll just call him Gerald. Hey, Gerald, um, look, I found somebody, I found your twin, blah, blah, blah. And, and then we were just, it was, it was a weird conversation. It was very awkward, but we were just bullshitting, talking. And then she just starts groping on me that whole time. And I finished the drinks. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pass the drinks, just feeling awkward and um, but just kind of embracing the just the the chaos that was just happening, right? So, and I was just like, all so right, this is a bride to be. She just she just went into the private room with your colleague, came out, had had a FaceTime with her ex on her phone with you, the stripper at the bachelorette party. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's are you guys it, unplugging it was, and seeing the code in the matrix here? It was the weirdest fucking thing, man. It was like, my all, the only thing that was going through my head was like, why the fuck are you marrying this guy? Or excuse my language. Why are you marrying this guy if you're, you just, you just, what I assume had sex with uh, my colleague. And then now you're, my face reminds you of your ex. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And she's clearly still in contact with guys from her past as well, which is another big red flag. Yeah. So, you know. There's a correlation, gentlemen. Wow, man. Um, cool. Well, um, you got any other, like anything else you want to drop? Any other wisdom? Any other tales from the? Uh, tre- oh, one other question I want to ask you: what, Like, what's the percentage of women at these bachelor parties that are actually attractive? Like, are uh, you know that are that are going to turn you on? Because my impression, a lot of the times, you know, when I see some of these photographs. Oh, actually, I want to get to the post-it notes too, because um, that was something else that we talked about. But what? But what percentage of them are actually like hot? Um, in, uh, a good majority of them, uh, I mean, you get some girls who, you know, are busted or, uh, they're reasonably so young, I would imagine if they're getting married, like they're not forties and fifties, yeah. like they're mostly younger than that. I've, uh, I mean, I don't see a lot of, oh, excuse me. I don't see a lot of women in like the early twenties getting married. It's more like mid 20s and older right. now and that you know that matches the there's a study that i um it was, i heard through a podcast they were talking about it but a lot a lot of uh women now are getting married in like the 30s and yeah i think the average beyond. age for women is like 29 at this point yeah so i can confirm that um what about the post-it notes because that, that you know that's one of the games that you um played and you sent me a couple of images um of some of the post notes like some of the things that women would write down can you explain the game and the sorts of things that were revealed with these post-it notes yeah uh so i won't well i won't uh go in details because this is like one of uh my uh babies in games so there's like there's a lot of different agencies out there and i work for a couple well i actually work for more than a couple um, but specifically for like the cabana Butler gigs and I don't want them taking my idea, but I'll give you mm-hmm. like a, a general sense. So mm-hmm. the post and notes that I was, I sent you is basically a game that I play when I'm doing the cabana slash Butler gig. And so there'll be a group of girls, whether they're outside or inside. Um, I tell every single one of them to, you know, I give each and every one of them a piece of paper with a pen and I say, okay, so write down the craziest thing that's ever happened to you. And then on the back of the sheet of paper, write down the most embarrassing and then fold it up and put in this bowl. Okay. And so they do that. And then I, well, I'm, I guess I'm already giving away the game. Um, then I just have to grab one at a time and read it. And then everyone has to guess who it belongs to 
um out of are they able to guess or yeah so they make their guesses they're like oh like you know everyone's like oh it's becky because she's the biggest whore and then because of the the story that this person wrote was like very it's like a very slutty story and becky's like no that wasn't me and then turns out it's like the shy girl Mm -hmm. that did um something you know crazy so i got the bag of of these little stories i actually saved these yeah i kept them all (laughs) i I go back and uh i laugh every time i read them yeah i've got a Uh, few here that you sent me i'll i'll just read them out uh inserting mdma up my butthole uh peed in my mouth while giving head uh poop my finger while inserting it in my boyfriend um there's a few others towards the top that you sort of let me see if i can pull them up and see them they're really hard to read. Uh, my friend lost her virginity to me in a threesome. I fucked in an airplane bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I fucked a man for new tires and he had a micro penis. Uh, yeah. I made a guy come by just sucking on his toes. Here, I can. Fuck my husband's pull. brother. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, my husband's brother. Well, there's something to admit, eh? Yeah. Uh, three sub with two black guys in Vegas. Groom and best man. Uh, I shitted during sex. Is that even possible? How the hell do you do that? Yeah. I always wondered the same thing. She must have ate something really bad. <laughs> yeah, oh, my um, God, dude. Hey, look. Uh, you got a chance to tell you a quick story Mm -hmm. uh so i have never been as grossed out as this story uh so we did the the paper thing right Uh, i can't find it with my you know hundreds of uh little sheets of paper but we'll call it the traveling um the traveling uber turd so this chick she hooked you know it was apparently her boyfriend or some guy she was hooking up with and she woke up she had to do her business in the bathroom apparently it didn't flush um and this is based on the piece of paper and she had to explain the story so this is what i remember um so she did her business it wouldn't flush she got she got the little little brush stick and it apparently wouldn't they wouldn't flush and so what she did was she (laughs) <laughs> oh my god she grabbed everything in the toilet and put it in her purse and oh left god. the house oh. <laughs> oh my god dude she left the house she got into uber and left um uh, went to her house and f- apparently flushed it there she and didn't she didn't want to leave it there for him to see so she took it home in her purse yeah and, and uh i <sighs> some of her friends knew about the story because they weren't like shocked but some friends were at the bachelorette party and i was shocked like i have so many fucking questions why didn't you just dump it in the bush or something um or wh- why did you have to put it in your purse you just asked the guy for a trash bag but yeah that's what she did like yeah. the amount of things somebody will do to not uh feel shame is is beyond this world dude but yeah that's yeah that i've always was... said that reputation management is really really important you know for gals I, i've you know i've noticed this during the ladies night shows you know we're having conversations you ask them something straightforward like hey you know uh you know how much money does a guy need to make and they'll sort of dance around it and they won't be honest about it and say well you know you should be making more money than me few women well a lot of them are just like well as long as he's a nice guy and he compliments me in the you know he's a nice guy in the morning and he makes me a coffee or something it doesn't matter if he makes you know less money than me or less or whatever and then it's like, you know, what they say and what they do is two different things. And there's always that reputation that they have to manage because they don't want to come off, you know, as a bad person or, you know, somebody that takes massive dumps that don't that don't flush, I guess. <laughs> but there's really no limit to, yeah. you know, managing that reputation. It's 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 super important, you know, for women. Dudes will just go take a dump in your toilet and clog it and be like, yo, your toilet didn't flush. You know, you have to call a plumber and just walk away. But <laughs> women will apparently take it home with them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. 
yeah it's it's uh beyond this world dude um i have i have i have have nobody waiting to to come in and ask questions so if you've got more stories i think that's why because i've never done an unplugged alpha show where where people don't click the link and come in to ask questions so if you want to keep going we got time okay let's see uh let's see let me ask you this question while you're contemplating that um what about your opinion of women when you were a kid changed by doing doing this job so what about my opinion about women has yeah because when you're a young man you're like you know girls are nice and they smell nice and you know sugar and spice and all things nice and then you start doing bachelorette parties and you know all these sorts of gigs like what opinions about women changed well i uh well hopefully this doesn't uh, get complex but if it does uh let me know um you know i've always been a very self-aware kid man like i question everything i've always been i'm always the the little philosopher um asking questions about anything and everything when i was a kid growing up you know born in 1990 watching the late night shows comedy shows i always just noticed the guy was played as a, the the dad was the bath the bathroom the, the idiot mm-hmm. husband right yeah. and i always i always question i remember i was a teenager like why is the father always the idiot like isn't there like some kind of you know alpha like in a comedy show like a some kind of alpha guy why are they portraying the dad as a as a idiot and then Mm -hmm. um my upbringing you know i I always heard the oh you know men ain't shit or your so-and-so dad ain't shit or and then you hear like other single moms or blah 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 like you hear it like there's just a constantly repetitive thing Mm -hmm. But I always noticed too with, um, you know, just a common thing uh, socially too, what I've noticed growing up. And um, as soon as I started diving in, I, just, I noticed also, you know, women aren't as um, sweet and s- sweet and nice like everyone uh, portrays them to be. Because I, once I started working the field, like, yeah, like women as uh, women are as horny and want all these nasty things, just like men, like what, what are people talking about that mm-hmm. women aren't, um, don't want rough sex and, or, you know, they don't, they don't crave these things. Of course they are. They're, they're human, just like us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, I mean, honestly, it, it has changed now and wanting to get married. I'm going to be completely honest. Like I, I don't want to, um, even the parties that I do, or even that the black girl that I met at the show, like there's a, there's a small amount of hope, but it's not like how it used to be like traditional values. Um, and with, I think I'm going all over the place, but yeah, I, I just, I wouldn't get married, man. Um, unless like, I'm married or, you know, unless I meet somebody and the state is on the man's side with 50, 50, but, you know, I've read your book. I've gone really deep into a lot of different, uh, things when it comes to, uh, what would happen if a man gets divorced in a state that doesn't favor a 50, 50 in the court system. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's just not ideal. So yeah, that's how it's changed. I hope that answered it. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Cause I guess you see them. Would you call them at their worst or behaving their worst? For the bachelorette parties? Yeah. In some cases, yeah. Sometimes they, you know, they just want a, a cute guy with his butt cheeks out um, in an apron, just serving them drinks. And, you know, uh, they'll just flirt, but they won't take it to the, to the distance of they want to, you know, they'll, they'll want to have sex with me or uh, any of the guys there. And sometimes some parties do take it far. What is the, um, what is the difference between how women behave at the events that you work at versus how women, how men behave at a uh, bachelorette party or even a uh, strip joint? Like, is there a, is there a correlation, you, you know, between the behavior? Do men behave worse? Do women behave worse? Like what's your experience with that been? I th- I 
I haven't been to enough bachelor parties, um, but what I, I've been to a few different female strip clubs. And I mean, guys, we're, we want to see tits and ass. And um, some guys do want to see more of a burlesque show or they just, uh, they're more into the arts. Um, but they're more all open and honest about it. Like, yeah, I want to see a naked girl and want to, want to seduce me or want to want me mm -hmm. and the women are more um they're not upfront about it they want it they do want um the same thing a guy wants but they're they're around the bush about it does that make sense yeah yeah hmm. okay um you got anything else for me before we wrap up yeah so i got a couple more stories Okay, so I was asked to do a strip job, and it was a police officer, and I went, I went in and just did my thing. There was a small batch group, probably like five or six, and during the show, one of the girls had mentioned something about like she had told her husband that there'll be no strippers at the house, blah blah blah. Of course, she lied, mm -hmm. um, and. Just uh, moments later, she said, oh, shit. And this is the owner of the house. And this was a friend of the bachelorette. She's like, oh, shit, my husband's on his way, blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, Tom, can you uh, get your stuff and, you know, get dressed and leave? I'm like, all right, whatever. I mean, I already got paid. I get paid before I do mm -hmm. my uh, show and then gather my tips. So as I was doing it, then she comes up to me again. It's like, oh, shit, he's outside. Can you, uh, you know, go upstairs? And so I was like, fucking hey, all right, what? All right. I went upstairs, and this uh, cute girl that was uh, there at the party went upstairs with me. She's like, hey, I'm going to keep you company. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, I don't, still to this day, I don't know if she had a boyfriend or not or was married, um, but yeah. it's just one of the cute girls was at the party. She went upstairs with me. She's like, yeah, I'm going to keep you company. And so I'm laying in the bed. And the cute girl was on the edge of the bed and I'm just complimenting compliment. I was just like thinking like I'm either so shit's gonna go down, I gotta get prepared. Um and I was carrying um at the time too, just in case like shit like this goes down. So this girl looks at me as I was just like figuring out what's gonna happen next. She's like, so Ask me the the most corniest fucking question, dude. She's like, "What's your favorite color?" As she gets closer to me on mm -hmm. the bed, and then, she, and I just looked at her like, "What?" I'm like it's red, and then she gets closer to me and she looks at me like, "Okay." And then she asks me another question. I'm like, oh, "Okay, she wants to have sex." So then we just start making out, and in my mind, I'm like, "All right, so we're about we're about to have sex, and I'm about to probably get in a fight with." Uh, the owners of the house's uh, husband great mm -hmm. uh so things get hot and heavy we're about to have sex and i hear a loud bang at the door and it's the owner of the house she said false alarm he's not here can you get your stuff and leave and so the cute girl just hops off of me and she's like oh okay well um, it's nice knowing you so <laughs> blue balls and no fight so I went, I, yeah, I went home, blue balls, and uh, my adrenaline was pumping. Yeah. Are there any, um, like, physical altercations at bachelor parties ever? Fights? Yeah. Not from my experience, but one of the guys that I used to uh, work with, he had an altercation. And he had an alterca altercation because the husband showed up. And, again, he didn't want any male strippers and he saw the guy I used to work with and he was pushing and shoving him but the guy that I used to work with he he, w he wasn't much of a fighter or mm -hmm. wasn't really a fighter at all um so he was just trying to calm the situation down uh, so this is yeah. when when like um their significant others are told there's not going to be any strippers there and then they find out there's strippers there and then it's usually you know the guy scrapping with you but there's nothing like amongst the women though eh? Yeah, it's basically, you know, the the women there have to 
you know, tell yeah. their significant other if whatever's going to happen. And they'll, sometimes they'll lie. So, yeah, yeah should... I guess it's easier if they're out of town because if they're flying out of town, there's not going to be an incident usually, right? Like unless they're doing like a stag or a stag at. Do they ever do stags, stagettes in another town and they still, you know, bring you in? Even if they're like the next hotel room over or the next building over or something like that? Yeah, they do. Um, I will still step had... out even even with the guys in the next, you know, like in the same state, obviously, like in the same town. Yeah. Interesting. Um, speaking about a hotel, I have this one story where I got asked to do a gig at a hotel. I was dressed as a sexy tuxedo guy and I went in and did my thing at this little hotel mm -hmm. and they invited us or invited me to hang out with them after go out in, in downtown. And I did, and we went back at the hotel and the girl who hired me for her friend's bachelorette, uh, we'll just call her Tina. So uh, Tina was, you know, pushing me to her friend. She's like, hey, you know, you should, uh... or she was just making, incentivizing, like, or she was basically saying, hey, you know, my friend so-and-so, um, Stephanie, we'll just call her Stephanie. So Stephanie, like, she's single, blah, blah, blah. And we were... So I was flirting with Stephanie and then um, something with her, she didn't, it didn't work out. So with Tina, we went back with Tina uh, for the remaining of the night and well, things got hot and heavy with her uh, while two of her friends were in the hotel room under the sheets. And then I get... <laughs> I felt this buzz sound and it was her phone. It went off and it was her husband mm -hmm. uh, calling. And so she answered it and she played it off. Like nothing was going on. And she was just talking to him and I'm just looking at her like, Oh, well, you have a husband. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys uh, have seen that happen when they're dealing with a girl that's got a, a boyfriend or something like that. And she's literally lying in bed next to the Chad for, uh, you know, for the, for the fun part. Um, not that uncommon, but, um, the, 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 the 80% number is higher than what I thought it would be. Cause I don't, I don't think I've seen guys more than 10, 10, 15, maybe 20% max step out on a commitment to a, a chick, but it seems like it's really, really a lot more common than I thought it would be like 80% is a big number. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's really tough because I mean, I've made mistakes in the past, um, and I'm not proud of it, but with this field, it's, I know Mike had said that this environment is toxic and that is true. It is, uh, it's what I, the analogy I can use for this, this line of work is it's like a drug, um, back in my twenties, I, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like I get, uh, you know, the attention, I get money, I get women, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, I'm constantly like, yeah, I can't wait to work on the weekend or get a gig because it's that uh, that that dopamine high of all this attention and um i'm just seen as this freaking superstar and it gets older after a while man and it's like um this this high runs out quick you know and and we i mean yeah men age like wine but um at the end of the day like what do you what um I like how you say it is like what uh, dent in the in the universe are you making? Um, <laughs> I mean, you put, you put some dents in some women, though, that's for sure. Right? You made an impression <laughs> on a bunch of them. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I was a little therapist to them, but overall, like, what's the what's the you know, like at at some point, like this job, like you know, there's a, there has to be an exit plan. There has to, like, what are you gonna? What's your bigger aspirations for it? So, how does um how do how do women deal with like outside of work? How do women that you're dating or in a relationship with deal with your day job? Like, are they okay with it? Or do they have reservations? Could you, cause you're a male stripper. They don't want to take you seriously or does it matter at all? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, but mostly, uh, you know, in the, in my twenties, it was fun. But now, uh, in my thirties, um, it's, you know, you, you meet caliber of women that, and especially in your life, you're like, oh, you're a stripper at 30 years old. Um, mm -hmm. They want to know like what, 
what's going on in your life? Do you have, you know, are, are you just this guy who's just stripping and doesn't have a, any life goals? Um, but sometimes you meet women that are very insecure with themselves. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, um, they have to figure out their own insecurities before um, dating anybody. But yeah, it, it has taken a hinder of in my uh, dating life. Um, but it's, I'll give you, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead, man. Oh, okay. No, uh, yeah, no, I mean, sorry. it has. Um, I, it was hard to accept it, but I use, and I've always used dancing and entertainment as a stepping stone to get to where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, you know, sacrificing a dating life, at least for quality women, traditional, um, valued women, um, if that, if that's what I needed to do, then that's what I needed to do. Um, because with the women that I'm attracted to is more of traditional, uh, cultured, um, not a party girl, not a party girl at all. Yeah. Uh, those type of women don't want to date a stripper because, you know, they have, uh, they, you know, they were raised by their dad and they, they wanted, they, they were taught healthy lessons and um, they want to have a family or blah, blah, blah. They don't want to incorporate themselves with a male stripper. And I'll give you a quick example is I dated somebody about two years ago and we'll just call her Sammy. I met Sammy. It was about six months in the relationship, six to seven months. And uh, a traditional Middle Eastern woman uh, came from a traditional background family and she didn't want to lie to her dad about my job position. I said, you know, just lie to him, just, you know, say I'm doing this, but I'm not doing this forever. So, you know, it shouldn't matter, but mm -hmm. because she stuck to her, her values of, I'm not going to lie to my dad. That shows a lot about my character and I love my dad. I wouldn't do that to him. She, um, what my conclusion was because the breakup was left kind of unfilled, but my suspicion was it was the male stripper job. She didn't want to lie to her dad. And I was after the breakup, I realized this. I'm like, okay, you know what? I have much more respect for her because she didn't want to cross those. Did you ever meet third. her dad? No. Well, actually no, okay. I did, but it wasn't, it was just like a pass by. It wasn't a proper introduction. Okay. So uh, here, I got a little a super chat here. Somebody's asking a question. Thanks for the stories. Uh, I just asked my ex how many male strippers she cheated on me with. That's a bizarre question. I mean, chances are I was blue pilled. What's your total body count, and what do you take home per year, if you don't mind? We okay. Well, we covered what male strippers can make. I want to know your body count. I'm not sure why that's important, but um, <laughs> well, I won't say the exact number, dude. But I lost count after. Um, uh, the amount of days there are in a year mm. and you know i've always uh even when I, when it comes to hooking up with people i've always uh war protection um because it's i've always knew it was uh there was a risk always involved yeah all right fair enough man so um i guess we'll wrap it up on that note you're you're not public um so this is kind of like um you know, you just reached out because you see my stuff and you wanted to share some stories, some, some stories from the trenches. Um, yeah. I'm guessing a lot of the stuff that I've said probably resonated is true. And you just wanted to sort of like confirm the stories or. Yeah. You know, I wanted to confirm, especially, you know, confirm Mike's stories. Um, I wanted to yeah, give my side um, of my stories and also, you know, elaborate on the um, the side, at least when it comes, if, you know, for your viewers, if you have a girlfriend who, um, goes to gay bars a lot, and I think it would be wise to find out if there's go-go dancers there. Mm -hmm. Um, because again, um, there, I mean, there's gay, there's straight go-go dancers, but, uh, if she's hanging out with, uh, bad influence, gay friends, or even her straight female friends, um, they'll push, uh, your girlfriend to the go-go dancers. If so, she gets drunk or... Uh, like I've always had a, uh, boundary with going out with gay friends. I mean, like I get a lot of chicks have, um, you know, have that gay friend of theirs that they like to, you know, it's like a, it's like a woman, but it's not a woman. It's like a dude, but it's not a dude sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, they sort of hold out publicly that it's like a safe zone sort of thing. 
Um, but I know gay dudes. Like I know what they're about. They're super, you know, they're super uh, uh, slutty. You know, they sleep with a lot of dudes and not all of them are pure gay. Like some of them will sleep with chicks from time to time. So if you think that, yep. you know, putting your girlfriend in the, the care or the hands of a gay man for a night or for a weekend away or something's going to be safe, think twice, man. Yep. Because it's not. Um, all right. So I'll let you go. I got a guy over here that wants to ask a question in the... Um, in the sort of like the green room waiting area. So, um, yeah, thanks for, uh, chiming in and sharing some of the, you know, stories from the uh, trenches, man. It's, um, it's been a few years, so it's been a minute or two since I've talked to a guy in that space and, you know, slightly different stories. Some are also very similar, but, um, I think the biggest one from this one that the guy should really, really pay attention to is if you think that, you know, bachelorette parties are okay. Um, you know, think again, because you've, you know, because you've heard exactly what happens, you know, behind the scenes from, from a guy that's been in the space since 2009. So there you have it. I want to leave with a, uh, can I leave with a quick message? Yeah, fire away, man. Go ahead. All right. Uh, and like I said, it's doing this for so long, you get numb to what you see. And if I could tell any of the guys, you have a soon to be bride, or her girlfriend, um, going to the ba these bachelorette parties. Um, just review their your girlfriend's friends, honestly, because you know when I'm doing these, a lot of the times like, oh, we're not gonna tell your husband that, or we're not gonna tell him that you did that, or you know said that. Um, we'll just keep it between us. Like there, there's always some kind of dirty laundry from it. It doesn't matter if your girl, even if you see your girl is uh, the sweet, innocent one. Like there's everyone has a degree of some kind of dirty laundry. And I hear it. Um, and I also I see and experience everything that goes on before the divorce. If you, meaning if your girlfriend or soon be wife, you know, it has some tendencies like I'll see that and I'll see the before of the chaos that's going to erupt in a later divorce. And so that, that's what makes me feel numb to, um, it makes me feel numb going in these parties, seeing the same kind of dirty, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, basically I see, I see, I see it before I see the relationship break before it does, if that makes sense. And all I got to say is uh, I just hope your, your viewers, uh, it takes a really good of a good look at your girlfriend's friends and um, verifies that your girlfriend yeah. can leave to a bachelorette party and tr and you can trust her, her group of friends not pushing your girlfriend to do some some skanky activities. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tom. You got it. Appreciate it, buddy. Bye. Take care. All right, uh, Mateus. I'll pull you in a second and do that last question. Uh, Andy just sort of followed up with the. Uh, Thanks. My ex was super jealous all the time, accusing me of cheating. In reality, she was probably the cheater. She went to bachelorette parties. Yeah, dude, guaranteed. You know, um, he said 80% of the time um, there's stepping out going on. So, uh, you know, whether it's a grope, a touch, a handy, a, you know, mouth work, full on, you know, third base, whatever, um, it clearly happens more than you think it does. To, you know, I'll say this to his, to his point earlier, you know, that Tom said that, um, um, you know, take a look at your girl's friends, like her circle of influence. And I've said this many, many times, like, you know, if you hang around five broke, fat losers doing nothing with their life, you're going to be the six. You know, you, you know, if her friends, you know, if her five closest friends are promiscuous, they like to party, they're all boss girls. You know, he said that was another big red flag too. His boss girl seems to pop up a lot as well. Um, she's she's going to be the six. So I wouldn't even let women... Like I wouldn't, like why would I park my exotic car in a shitty neighborhood and hope it's going to be fine? The chances of something bad happen to it go up exponentially versus, you know, if it's in my garage with the alarm on. Why would I let my girl go into an environment where potentially something bad could happen? It's just stupid. It's it's called frame control. You need to manage the frame and control the frame. And if she doesn't like that, then let her go. You know, the simple answer to that is, you know, she's going to do the, uh, oh, you're controlling or you're insecure. Or, Don't be silly. You know, my friends are good people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, you throw alcohol into the mix. You throw another town into the mix where what happens in whatever town stays in whatever town. 
Um, you know, you you know, you throw the fact that it's uh, you know, it's her last hurrah before she gets mar- married to uh, Bill or whatever. You put all those ingredients into a blender and you blend it up and you pour that into a glass. You've got a shit shake. You've got a recipe of ingredients for bad things to happen. And only an idiot would let somebody that they care about go into that environment. Are there good girls out there? Well, we heard the story about the woman of God who sat in the corner saying that it's not her her thing, not participating, not indulging, not not getting involved in it. But um, I think why even why even let that happen? It's a simple answer. I'm going to take this call in real quick and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Mateus, how you doing, buddy? Hi there, Rich. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, fire away. You got a question for me? Okay. Uh, it seems that my camera is busted, so sorry, but I can't. No problem. Leave it on. Okay. So it's more like uh, I want to challenge you on, on something. Sure. It's more. Yeah. So you um, have that saying that uh, women don't care about your inner struggles and they hang out uh, at the finish line. Yeah. I would challenge yeah. the, uh, you on that. Go ahead. Uh, I would take that uh, one step further. I would say that most people don't care about your inner struggle. They just hang out and, at the finish line and they pick the winners. What are your thoughts on that? Well, men don't behave that way with women. We don't care if a woman's a woman, winner or not. See, the the soundbite is women don't care about men's struggles. They hang out at the finish line and they pick the winners. Men don't mm-hmm. do the exact same thing. We don't care about you know things like this. It, it's not going to push us away as long as she's hot, as long as she's available to us, it's not going to push us away. But women get turned off by guys that aren't able to solve their own problems. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. But what about the other men that uh, are actually not in your tribe? What about the other men that are strangers? not in your tribe? I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Yeah, on that? so what? The... Sorry, what? Can you elaborate on that? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what you're challenging me on. Yeah, so as yeah, so as I was saying that, uh, mo- uh, it, I, I think that it it applies not just to women. I mean, uh, w- uh, what do we care if uh, I don't know an, another guy, a complete stranger, has some uh, I don't know difficulty in in their life? Well, if it's a friend of mine, I'm going to care about it. Yeah, sure, but if it's not a friend, that that was uh, why I said if it's not. Uh, part of uh, our tribe we, we don't give a, a f about that yeah but you're conflating the importance and the significance of it when it comes to relationships between men and women when i when i make that statement i'm talking about a man and a wife boyfriend girlfriend i'm talking about a man and woman that are involved together you're you're talking about men caring about other mm-hmm. guys struggles in another continent somewhere else another country somewhere else of course not nobody cares Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that that was what I, I told you, what I wanted to say. Yeah, you, you're just taking it out of context. So just, like, just keep it simple. And when I'm talking about it, you know, within context between a man and a woman, women just mm-hmm. don't have the patience for a guy that can't solve his problems, right? So at some point, now there are women that will jump through flaming hoops to help a guy. Like there are women that will go to the earth's end to try to, you know, help a guy with his health, with problems that he might be going on, you know, in his life. But at some point. The vast majority of women will check out and they'll just be like, I didn't sign up for this. There was um there was a Marine. Um so so this is a good example of here. There was a Marine that sent me a DM the other day. I don't know if you saw it on the community tab of the page. Did you see it? I did not. Yeah, here, let me pull it up. I'll just I'll just read it to you real quick before we wrap up because this is because this is the context that I'm talking about it in. Um and share screen. How do I Oh, come on, present. There we go. Um, so this is the context in which I'm referencing it. So this guy says, um, so this came on Twitter. He said, keep speaking the truth, bro. I was Marine, blast injured in Afghanistan, came back going through treatment for seizures. After a while, she had enough. I had a bad seizure and she said, I didn't sign up for this and walked out and left me, didn't even call an ambulance. Uh, he also goes on to say, I watched this happen to 100 Marines, same as me, Walter Reed nurses during war said more wives abandoned their injured returning husbands than stayed. They'd leave their rings by the bedside table. I could say a lot more, but I'm sure that you already know. That's the reference in which I'm yeah, talking sure. about it, like as it matters to relationships. Does that make Understood. sense? Yes. Right, Thanks for hopping in. See you, buddy. All right. Um, 
Guys, we're on every Wednesday for the Unplugged Alpha. Um, Call-ins are always available and open to anybody that has uh, q and A. I I don't usually have guests. I usually sort of like solo the show and I cover a, uh, a topic, but I thought it would be um, better to, rather than tell his stories that he told me, I just invited him on. I said, yo, Tom, you know, do you want to hop on a podcast and sort of, you know, enlighten my audience from your perspective? Because I think it'll, it'll come across and... Uh, be more authentic if you tell the stories rather than me tell the ones that you're sharing with me in the DM. So he did that. So thanks, Tom, for that. But um, yeah, come back every uh, Wednesday. We're live at noon Eastern Standard Time. This is a new time slot for the Unplugged Alpha. Collins are always uh, there. Uh, Monday night is Ladies Night, and Moff is doing his show, Moffis Hours, on Thursdays. Um, I've got my event this weekend, so there's not going to be a general show. I've been super busy preparing for that, but I'll start to, you know, return to some of those Saturday morning shows. And again, reminder, my, uh, second edition of the unplugged alpha is available on audible now. So they just approved it this morning. The audio files are all good. It's about six hours of material. So I think there's about an hour and a half of additional material that's been added to the unplugged alpha book including um, summary field reports from my editor, Steve from accounting, and expansions on certain chapters uh, that needed uh, expansion and clarifying. I also try to water, I don't wanna use the word water down, but I also try to soften the blow of the tone um, so that it can be used more as a gift because some people had reservations about buying the book and giving it to like, you know, a nephew or a brother, or something like that. So like, you know, some of it's, some of it's harder. Um, so some of the language was, uh, modified so that it still has the impact, but it's not going to hurt Fifi's as much, if that makes sense. Anyway, go grab the audiobook. Um, I know the first one, there was some errors in the audio recording with lines being read in duplicate or certain things not being cut out. I use the shitty editor, you know, first go at writing a book, obviously, but the second, um, but the second edition audio files are impeccable throughout. Um, the, 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 uh, audio editor did a fantastic job. So, Go check it out, and if you enjoy the book, make sure you go to Amazon and leave a written review. Let guys know, um, you know, what kind of value you got out of reading the Unplugged Alpha, and enjoy the uh, the podcast, guys. You know, see you guys soon. Peace out.